amounts of money to members of the church. How can we preach the truth? Every time you have a need, you go to that member of the church, can you lend me 200 naira there? Can you lend me 300 naira there? I dare tell you, if that man commits adultery, you cannot open your mouth. Because you are his debtor, you are not his pastor. You are the pastor to the other people, but you are the debtor to that man. We are not of honest report. If the ladies that are coming to the church we say that we're helping them, we're counseling them. And then they're cooking for you. And while they're cooking for you, your wife is not around. And you're up and them. And you're committing morality with them. If you don't really commit the immorality with them, you're up handling them. And these ladies know that, well, pastor is like any other human being. Has no control, no power over his body. How are we of honest report? When those ladies, when they do anything wrong, we cannot challenge them. Because if we challenge them, ah, they will say, Pastor, nobody is perfect. Even Pastor himself, we all know the story. So, Pastor, don't, if you say too much about me over the pulpit, your secrets are in my hand. You keep quiet. Say, well, well, if God should mark iniquity, you will stand. So, everything will die down then you'll be a slave of that girl. If that girl will say, ah, pastor, if you talk like that and you deal with me like that, I will tell your wife what has been going on between us. It's, ah, uh, 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 keep quiet. Don't let us make trouble. I know your weaknesses, but I will overlook everything. We overlook what we should discipline because we are not living right. And those ladies in the church, and those people we are borrowing money from, they silence us. We cannot preach the Bible. But I would rather come to shame temporarily. I would rather have that girl say what you want to go and say. Let me totally repent. And let me be free once and for all. Rather than we are in bondage to that lady. We are in bondage to the people we have borrowed money from. It's better to die of hunger than to be borrowing money from members of the church and then I cannot preach the truth anymore. Oh, we say, the church building needs a large amount of money. We need to build it. Well, I'm not going to take the money from a smuggler, from a robber, from a person that is not living right, so that I cannot correct the person, I cannot teach the person anymore. You see, many of us pastors, many things have gone wrong. And we have to be sincere. We have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to start all over again. I know I am called. I know I have a ministry. If what is destroying my ministry is this little thing here, little thing there, little thing there, Lord, I'm bringing everything to the altar. I'm going to settle everything. If I need to repent all over again, need conversion all over again, need cleansing all over again, need a overhauling, a total change all over again, Lord, I'm ready, here am I. And I believe that if you will do that with the Lord, You'll be surprised what he can make of you. Let me remind you. Maybe you know this, but I'll tell you. I've never gone to any seminary. I've never gone to any Bible college. I've never taken, I don't have any certificate. I don't have any diploma on theology. I do not have anything except the Bible and a sincere heart. And I love God. If God tells me I'm wrong on one issue today, I'll cry like a baby. If God tells me that I should tell the church that something is wrong, I'll go to the church and say, God told me to tell you this, that I've been wrong on this side. That's why God is blessing the work. I don't want my heart to be hard like that of Saul. Saul did something wrong. And Samuel came to him and challenged him and said, you've not obeyed the Lord. He said, well, I've obeyed the Lord. It's the people that got all the sheep. Then he said, because of that, you've lost the ministry. But look at David on the other hand. David did something more terrible than Saul. He committed adultery. Nathan came to him, and Nathan gave him a parable. And David, like a king, judged. He said, who did that? That person should be punished. And Nathan said, thou art the man. David didn't say, okay, hold it, shut up, I am king. He said, Nathan, you know what? 
I'm a big sinner. And how many people are like that today? That's why God used that man to write so many psalms. That's why God used that man to win so many battles. That's why God used that man so that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will come through him. That's why he said, I've given an everlasting covenant unto David. Not because he never did anything wrong, but because when it was pointed out to him, he said, yes, I'm sorry, I've done wrong. And if I am like that, then God will have favor on me. If you are like that, God will have favor on you. The secret of a successful ministry is not certificate. There are many certificates that are just hanging there. God is not going to use certificate, seminary knowledge, a soft heart, an open Bible, sincerity, repentance, saying, God, I have missed it, I'm coming back. And if you are like that tonight, if Jesus tarries, many years after this time, you will look back to this day and you will say, that's the place I got the secret of a successful ministry. I don't believe that God is a respecter of persons. I don't believe that anybody is so special in the hand of God. What he's doing with me, he can do with you. What he's doing with other people, he can do with everybody. But God needs us to go before him and say, Lord, I missed it in that point. 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 I told you all this tonight because God told me to tell you. If I wanted to be popular with you, I won't tell you this. The way I've told you these things, I'm not looking for popularity or entertainment. I just want to do the will of the Lord. The burden is lifted up from my heart. I can go back to the Lord tonight and can say, Lord, I told them what you told me to tell them. You now can go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I think that man told us what you wanted him to tell us. And we are going to be sincere. We are going to repent. We are going to seek the face of the Lord. Or is there somebody there that says, no, I'm an angel. No problem with me. Isaiah saw the glory of God, a great prophet. And he said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. I live in the midst of unclean people. And the angel of the Lord came to him and touched his lips with the coal taken from the altar of the Lord. He said, your sin is purged. Your iniquity is taken away. Immediately after that cleansing, God said, who shall I send? And Isaiah said, am I not available? Here am I. Send me. Let's rise up and pray. Let's surrender to the Lord. Just open your heart to the Lord. Just pray to the Lord.
Amen. Our Father and our God, we we'll thank you for your word tonight. You have sincerely exposed your mind to us. You've sent your word from your altar and have made us to know what we ought to know. Lord, we come before the altar tonight with an open heart, with a willing mind. And we confess all our sins all our inadequacies before your throne. And we'll seek your mercy tonight that you forgive us, you will change us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We know, Lord, that the blood is flowing to cleanse. The blood is flowing to remove every stain and every iniquity from our lives. Lord, I pray that tonight you will do so like you did in the life of Isaiah the prophet. You will do so tonight. You will change us. You will renew us. You will recreate us. You will remold us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, the word have declared that whosoever is in Christ be it a member or a minister, must be a new creature, and all things must pass away, and all things must become new. And Lord, tonight, any area of our life that is yet to be renewed, Father, we submit them to you, and we ask that you renew them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh God in heaven, we thank you, because you have given to us the key tonight to successful ministry, to have an open Bible, a willing spirit, to learn and to repent and to change. And I pray that you will keep this key in our hearts, in our hands, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Father, I'm asking, oh God, that any area that we have erred before, I pray you will restore us back and accept us in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Father, we're your servant and we're willing to obey your word. We're willing to turn and we're willing to repent, accept us, and use us in a greater dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we know that you have brought us together so that you can make a turning point in our lives as well as in our ministry. And this is a sweet beginning. This is a wonderful beginning. And we believe, Lord, that this week shall be a week never to be forgotten in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, Lord, because you have answered our prayers tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus. And amen. amen. Free. The 
Yeah. 